Revealing content on Hover. So far we've seen how transitions can smooth over the state changes from one state to another. In this lesson, we'll create a more complex looking animation where the content of the page adjusts on Hover with many movements happening at the same time. We'll be coordinating a complex looking series of transitions that work together. And we'll be learning when it's okay to not have a visible transition when changing states. To get started, open the Module 2 sample code file and look for the folder 03 Start in the 02 folder. A completed version of this lesson's code is in the folder 03 End. Here's what we're going to build. Let's get started. You may have noticed how we spend most of the lesson setting up the beginning and end states, and the transition part of our CSS is quite small. I find that this tends to be the way when working with transitions. Keyframe animations take more work, setting up each of the percentages in a keyframe animation, for example. When we're using transitions, though, we put most of the work into building the beginning and end states and let the browser handle everything in between. That's what we'll do in this lesson. I've set up some initial code to get us started. In our index.html file, we find a set of options. Each option has a badge at the top, a title, a summary, along with more info and call to action sections. We're going to hide these last two and then show them on hover while also hiding the summary text. You'll notice that there's a class name highlighted added to the container in this option. This is the hook we'll use to decide whether the option is showing the extra content or not. Later we'll write some JavaScript to add or remove this class on hover but for now, it'll give us something to style. Looking at the starting HTML in the browser, it's a bit of a mess. I'm positioning each element using absolute positioning so they overlap. Let's arrange this content better. Opening the file revealcontent.css in the stylesheets folder, we'll start arranging the elements. We begin by hiding the content that will only be visible on the highlighted option. To start, we specify the More Info and Call to Action blocks. We want these elements to be invisible and not interfere with the content, so we set Visibility to Hidden. In the case of the Call to Action, we add a transform to scale it down. When we animate this later, it'll grow to full size. This will create an effect where the button kind of zooms into place. What we're doing here is setting up the initial state for these elements. Even though they're invisible, they're essentially primed for animation to their finished state. Let's style the highlighted state next. We want the highlighted option to really stand out. So first we give the option container itself a white background and make it bigger than the other options. We style the option container using the background and border color properties. Then a transform to scale it up to 1.2 times the normal size. And lastly, translate to push it down to sit better alongside the other options. Next, we style the badge and the title. We'd like them to move up and make space for the more info content beneath. For the badge, we translate it up by 5M and make it stand out by scaling it up also. We're using an SVG for this badge, so it'll look good when scaled up. If this is going to be a bitmap image, it could be worth making sure it's large enough to handle being scaled up. For the title, we move it up by 3.5M so that it sits under the badge. It's time to show the hidden content. For each of the More Info and Call to Action blocks, we set out how they need to look when they've finished their transition. The More Info block needs to move up to sit beneath the title. 
So we move it up by applying a transform to translate it on the y-axis. The call to action element will move the other way. It'll move down to make space for the more info block. We apply a translate y of 1.25m to push it down. And since this transform doesn't mention scale, this implies that it should return to its full size. Lastly, we're going to hide the summary text. We'll remove this summary by setting the visibility to hidden. Let's take a look at the result. This looks good, but there's no interaction. Let's add in the hover event to these options. In the start folder, I've added a JavaScripts folder with the file highlight.js. This file is called in at the bottom of the index.html file, along with jQuery. We'll be using jQuery this time, as it has a nice hover method we can use that also works on mobile devices where the visitors will be able to tap instead of hover. In the JavaScript file, you'll find a little bit of code that runs when jQuery is ready. We add an event listener for the hover event on the option. This method is passed in two functions. The first runs when the mouse goes over the element, and the second runs when the mouse leaves the element. In the first, we want to remove any highlighted classes from the options. We then add a highlighted class to the option we hover over. For the second function, we remove the highlighted class. In the finished version of this code, I've added a little extra JavaScript to the second function. It sets a timeout and returns the highlighted state to the featured option. Let's see it in action. We've done a lot of work so far, but none of it has been animations. Thankfully, the hard work is done. We have a nice beginning and end state for each of the elements in our options, and we've built in the logic to switch between these states. Let's smooth the transition between these states using transitions. In our revealed content CSS file, we can first add the necessary transitions for the option container itself. We add the option block and a transition, first being the transform which will animate the scale and y-axis position. We set a duration of 5 seconds and a cubic Bezier timing function with coordinates 0, 1 0.7, 0.3 and 1. You'll notice that the duration is very long at 5 seconds. This is because of the timing function. This animation starts off very fast and zooms right past the end state before slowly gradually returning back. The majority of the 5 seconds will be spent on the latter part resulting in a more fluid looking animation. We then add another transition, this time for the background. It'll fade in quickly in just 0.2 seconds with a simple ease out timing function. Next, we need to add transitions for all the other elements inside the option. Let's see if we can do this efficiently. We begin with the option and then an asterisk, which translates to any element inside the option container. Adding a transition then, we limit it to just the transform property, give it a reasonably quick duration of half a second, and we'll use the same exponential ease out timing function we used earlier. Here we have the finished result. It's worth mentioning that we're not animating opacity here. When setting up the styles for each element's default and highlighted states, we didn't specify opacity. 
Often when showing hidden elements, it would be useful to have them fade in and out using opacity, but this time I chose not to. If we had the elements fading in as well as doing the other movement, it would feel overdone. What we're doing here is a kind of sleight of hand in that the old content disappears suddenly, but is replaced by the new content. Our eyes sometimes try to fill in the blanks when this happens, and it looks to us like a really fast animation. It's a good idea to experiment with your animations. See if you can make them faster, or animate less things while still getting the right effect. When you do, you might find your CSS code is tidier, and you have an animation that still achieves the results you want. In this lesson, we put together a complex looking hover effect using just two transitions. We learned how JavaScript can help provide a hover style event that allows more advanced interaction than the simple CSS hover state. And we saw how we don't always need to apply a transition when changing state and still end up with an impressive animation. Next, we'll take a look at something we've neglected to style so far, the call to action buttons. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at animating the hover as well as the active state for a button.